Come with me to Cincy region for four days as I explore the Blink Festival, food, drinks, and fun. Hey guys, so I'm here at the Cincy region, which is a combination of both Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. We're currently at the DeVoe Park in Northern Kentucky, and you can see just across from the river is the Cincinnati skyline. The border between Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky is the Ohio River, which funnily enough is actually owned by the Kentucky State. Hotel Covington is a boutique hotel in downtown Covington in Kentucky. So I'm checked in at Hotel Covington where I'll be staying for three nights. So here's a quick room tour with the washroom. So there's some mini bar to purchase. So this is cool, they give you two tokens and it's good for one free coffee at the lobby. Hey guys, I'm checking out Ghost Baby for the kickoff party of Blink Festival. Hey guys, I'm here at Ghost Baby, which is one of the most unique bars in the city because it is actually five stories underground, the Over the Rhine neighborhood. Oh yeah, they asked for a blank special. So I got their blink cocktail, which they made specifically for the festival. One thing I love about the Cincy region, it's very walkable. So you can walk in both states, both cities, and everything is walking distance in downtown, and it's amazing. So our next stop is McCormick and Schmicks to do the Blink Parade viewing party. So we're here at McCormick and Schmicks for the Blink Festival Parade VIP viewing. This is right at the heart of downtown Cincinnati with the perfect view of the parade on 5th Street. So as a VIP party, we're having drinks. So obviously what I noticed right away are the oysters and shrimps. So we have crab cakes, redneck oysters, some shrimps, some lobster tails and prime rib. Hey guys, so the parade is starting, so let's check it out. It's, it's so happening here at night. It's amazing. The vibe, the atmosphere. So this is the Roebling Bridge, which you can use to cross between Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Apparently, this is the prototype they use for Brooklyn Bridge. It was made here first. So we're checking out this installation. So it's a light and sound installation. Cool. This is the third year of Blink Festival and there's an estimated 2 million people this weekend. So exciting, you can see the city buzzing, so many people, the community is all here. So we're now walking along the Roebling Bridge. It's such a beautiful night tonight. It is such a vibe here in Blink Festival. Seriously, if you want to check out the Cincy region, try to go here during Blink Festival. It's just the vibe, the energy, so many people enjoying the city. We are watching the drone show as part of the Blink Festival and it's amazing like 300 drones flying in a choreographed manner with lights and different choreography very beautiful
So this is Arcade of Light and we saw like Pac-Man, Asteroid, and other games in your childhood. <gasps> so right now we're walking the streets and on a mission to check out different installations. This light show at the Mother of God Church is one of the most popular spots. So our Hotel Covington also has a light installation in the front of the hotel. And it looks like a black hole. What do you think it looks like? This used to be a 1930s auto garage and filling station, but now it's been reimagined into a restaurant and bar. They also have cocktails specific to Bling Festival, and they're supposed to glow in the dark, so that's what we ordered, and let's see how nice it will turn out. So this is the lit lemonade, and it lights up through the ice cube, and it has cotton candy on top. So I'm here at Coppins for breakfast, and I forgot to bring the token for free coffee, and the server was so nice, and she actually just gave me one for free. So Coppins is the restaurant in Hotel Covington, and it's very beautiful inside. I got here the farmer's omelet. It has smoked ham, aged cheddar, and your choice of beef, fat, breakfast potatoes, and fruits. Obviously, I'm going with the beef, fat, potatoes. Their dining room is so beautiful, it actually has a sunroof so it's nice and bright and the interior is very rustic. Fun fact, so the name Coppins is actually based on the original Coppins department store where the building was located. So I'm checking out the new Rift Distillery. It's an award-winning anchor to the Kentucky Craft Bourbon Trail. And uh, it all began right here, behind these doors. system of the, the well water. There's larger coils inside that'll circulate that water throughout to begin to first descent. I think that okay, we can try to feel the heat. But in doing so, we got to get it into a new charred oak barrel, which what you see here is one of our charred barrels. Uh, this is about a, I say this is about a, a light four. What you're seeing is that uh, that alligator skin that's in that barrel. Um, what it's creating is a is a is a go between to allow that new make that clear spirit we saw downstairs to venture in and out of that barrel. <laughs> However the hell you enjoy that whiskey is the best way. So at the end of the tour. You get to try six different whiskey. So from right to left, we did the straight, the single barrel straight, rye, single barrel rye, malted rye, and then the Balboa rye, which is pretty interesting. Yes, Balboa rye is hyper local. The rye comes from Indiana. So we're here at Baker's Table Pizzeria for some farm-to-table pizza. It's actually right across from Baker's Table Restaurant, which was the first restaurant the owners opened before they started the pizzeria. So I got the Kentucky meal. I moved here from Oakland, California seven years ago. And the whole concept was brunch restaurant, local produce, we're gonna make 100% of our bread. So at the Baker's Table, I actually have a table over there. If you wanna come see it, you're welcome to. Um, it was made by a baker, he built it by hand 25 years ago, he baked on it. Then he sold the bakery, I bought the table. Having a restaurant that made bread and the kitchen was not set up. The kitchen was bad. So we were like limping through trying to make bread, but we didn't have a steam injection oven, we didn't have like the right equipment. So at some point I said, I think I need to open a bakery. We started eyeing this building, and then uh, this opened a year ago. So the concept here is, whereas that's a little bit more fine dining, Elevated, hot date, anniversary. Bring your dog, sit on the patio, walk in, it's really casual. The goal is just like a place that people in the neighborhood can be. Um, so all the bread's made with organic, stone ground, whole grain flour, which was like our, that was like our, our reason for being here. It was like, can we make a bakery that features local flour exclusively?
got the buffalo chicken, pomodoro, and the margarita pepperoni pizza. We're now at desserts. This is the coconut pavlova, and this is the chocolate budino tart. So we're here to have dinner at Boca, which is one of the most popular restaurants in Cincinnati. And it's actually considered one of the top French restaurants in the U.S. according to Travel and Leisure. We shifted gears slightly with more, more emphasis now on small plates. The recommendation is three small plates per person, the thinking being three of them equals appetizer and entree. About a third of the way down, scallop and caramelized Brussels sprout. This dish goes back 21 years to our first location. It is unchanged, and these are not your mother's Brussels sprouts. They've been caramelized in brown butter three hours till they're almost black. They're dressed in a very intense brown butter truffle vinaigrette, a little frisé and watercress, shaved to parmesan, and topped with a seared diver scallop. Quite unique and rich. I'm going to jump down to the Amish chicken, fourth from the bottom. My favorite dish this kitchen has ever done. Served over a wild mushroom truffled risotto that is ridiculous sight. The upper third of the menu is a kind of light salads and lighter fare. Amachi crudo for the sushi lovers. This is raw yellowtail. And lastly, and we will happily get as deep in this menu as you care to, uh, the very second item from the top, palm souffle. This is a nod to the Masonette restaurant that occupied this space for 36 years. They've been gone for 17 or 18 years now, I guess, but very iconic. They were the world's longest running five-star restaurant. Mobile Guides Five Stars, all 36 years they were open, and we humbly try to fill those shoes. But palm souffle, these were the Masonette French fries. They called them palm frites. It's the most difficult dish that we execute. We're only one of three that we know of. We serve them with Bernays sauce for dipping. And if you'd like, I will send three or four baskets immediately if you'd like to nibble on them while we look over this menu. Drinks will be up shortly. Palm souffle is on the way. Thank you. And we'll go from there. Hey guys, I'm here with Chef Maturin for an exclusive sneak peek of how they make their most famous dish. What is it, Chef? Uh, it's palm souffle, a classic from the Masonette, and we have recreated it in our restaurant, which is in the, the location of the famous Masonette. Awesome. Can't wait to try it. Every single day we do four cases of potatoes. They blanch them and it sets the outside to be almost like a sealed, like crimped edge, almost like a sealed edge, and that creates your air pocket. We slice them on French mandolins. So this is their old-fashioned in a bottle. This is their most popular palm souffle. Yeah. Yeah, this palm souffle is so addicting. This is my third piece already. It's actually hollow inside. So crispy, very potato -y. It has a salt and vinegar taste. So I got the hamachi crudo and the boca oyster, which is oyster racapella. This is the chef's kiss cocktail with tequila, Montreal strawberry, mint, and espelette. So I got the Amish chicken with truffle risotto. I was torn between this and the filet boca, but our servers swore by this dish, so I just had to try it. Candy Bar 3.0, our most popular, think Snickers meets Reese's Cup. So guys, they have a 40-year port, so that's what I'm having. So I got the candy bar dessert, this they said it's the most popular one. So we're walking the streets on a Friday night for Bling Festival and it's crazy. So many people all outside having fun. The city is so alive and it's so lit.
Spicer is also an Asian night market during Blink Festival and they're serving street food. I'm here at the Anchor Grill, which is a 24-hour diner and it's been named the best diner in Kentucky according to Food & Wine. Be sure to come early because it's a very popular local spot and you can see line up outside the door even. Inside it's very nice. There's three sections. One is like a, your normal diner area. And then inside there's a more intimate dining room and then there's another section that has a nautical feel. When you're in the Cincy region, you have to try Geta. Geta is a German-inspired sausage invented right here in the Cincy region by German immigrants. Geta is a meat and grain mush or sausage. The one at Anchor Grill is made with pork and beef as well as oats. It's been turned into a sausage patty and then fried. They actually have all sorts of Geta dishes, so they have a Geta omelette, and I'm trying their popular GLT, which is Geta Lettuce Tomato. It's actually really good. I recommend trying it on its own first before biting into the whole sandwich. It kind of falls apart easily as well, so you might want to ask for a spoon and fork. Here at Revival Vintage Shop, known for having very rare and priceless bourbons, some of them over 50 plus years from all over the world. Let's check it out and see what they have. Welcome to Revival. Uh, I can't wait to share this with you. I am Brad Bonds, one of the founders. Uh, the owner, Shannon Smith, we're actually woman owned. Uh, I personally live the dream every day. Uh, I'm basically like the American Pickers of Liquor. We have a little bottle shop here. Right now, we got an epic collection that just came in. I'm sharing with my man here, Mr. Raymond. We are drinking a 1962 uh, Brown Foreman, uh, Old Forester. We opened this decanter today. I have a backup right here. It makes it a lot easier to, uh, to sell another one when you have one open. This is actually a collection I just got from uh, the old mayor of Philadelphia, Frank Rizzo. Uh, this is what's called a Dusty Scotch Gin. Rum, tequila, vodka, all of it, bourbon heavy. We got this awesome swing with the box. Over to this bottle, all these are $5. And then this tequila is from the 70s or 80s. Over to this bottle, it's 10. This is 15, this is 25. I have Bushmills from the 60s, 70s. I have a 60s Stewart's Cream of the Barley. This is um, Pineapple Cordial from Cuba. This is a digestive uh, from the 20s. Apricot Cuban from the 40s. Uh, just, you know, in a 30s cognac, um, absolutely like epic options for a very fair price. Yeah. For me, these are all old baseball cards mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, stuff like this is timeless. It'll never be made again. And no matter what you do, you can't replicate this. Mm -hmm. And it's like your grandmother's home cooking. If you have her recipe, you just can't make it like she did. Mm -hmm. And I have it. And I think the proof's in the pudding and uh, we have it open, you know, so... It'd be one thing if I had just a bottle shop and we don't open them, mm -hmm. but we open these time capsules and you taste history. Yeah. So yeah. this is a 1962 Maybe Old Forester. If you want to take, yeah. Cheers! Mm -hmm. If you love spirits and liquors, this is like the spot. It's really like an attraction to be here. Uh, we just sold a bottle from 1893. Um, I have several bottles from the early 1900s. They're actually over here. This is from like 1900 to 1915. Uh, nobody even knows what it is. It doesn't say the proof. It doesn't say who distilled it. This was bottled in 29. This is from 1940. Uh, this one's from 1908. And then this is early 1900s. Uh, whiskey rectifier from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, epic bottle. This is a the Swastika Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky. And obviously after Prohibition, uh, super cool bottle. Just an epic piece of history. And um, it's probably from 1910 or so. Pre-Prohibition bitters, super cool seal. I look forward to opening this and uh, making some cocktails at my new place. This is early 1900s distillate, uh, probably bottled in the early, uh, like 1910 to 1915 Belmont. And then this is a bigger version of the swastika bottling. Early 1910s, uh, probably, uh, or barreled early 1910s, bottled probably just before prohibition, uh, super sick. And then 
Very low fill, corks just screwed, unfortunately. A cool piece of history right here. It says 1870 rye. Okay, Brad, so is it time for our vintage tasting? Yes, sir, let's go. So we have an epic tasting here. This rye is from the early 1900s, probably 1915, at 54 Grandad. This is done by National Distillers, bonded. I have a 40s, 50s Chivas Regal Scotch. And then we're gonna finish off with an apricot Cuban cordial from the 40s. You know, Castro wasn't even in power. This will be your last pour, but I'm pouring it for first. Vintage spirits I'm trying. This the Shiva Sriga. And, um, and so like, this is the Cuban Cordial. This is 70, this is 76. All check this out. We'll just say it's, so it's pretty sweet. Right? So look, has a kick at the end after you swallow it. So the, but it's very nice and light. It has a nutty flavor. So I thought this was a decorative so piece, but it's actually whiskey inside. It's a Jim Beam whiskey. So we have a seal from 1986. Believe it or not, this has Jim Beam bourbon. It's 100 months, so it's probably put in a barrel in the late 70s. And uh, my man Raymond here is going to do a little nip. And so this is actually drinking fabulous right now. Every bottle is kind of different, but this one in particular is a just an incredible expression of uh, Jim Beam when they made great bourbon. So this is the closest I can be to being a bartender. So I'm opening the 1962 Old Forester here. Boom! I'm here at Gold Star Chili to try Cincinnati's most iconic dish. This here is the Cincinnati chili. It's one of the most iconic dishes in the Cincy region and it's invented in Cincinnati by Greek immigrants. You get the spaghetti, you get the chili, and you get a mound of shredded cheese on top. And that's called the three-way. And if you want a four-way, you can either choose beans or onions. And for a five-way, it's all of it in one shot. And I got the five-way here, regular, for $7.89. very good. It's like you're eating spaghetti, but instead of tomato sauce, you're using chili as the sauce. So I'm here at Grater's Ice Cream, which is the institution for ice cream in Cincinnati. They've been selling their popular ice cream since 1870, and apparently their ice cream is so thick that they have to hand scoop each one. So Grater's uses the French pot process with an egg custard base. So they also have the popular Cincinnati Buckeye Candy, which is peanut butter fudge dipped in chocolate. So I asked them what's their most popular flavor and it's the black raspberry chip. And I also got cookies and cream on top. Wow, the black raspberry chip is so good. It's not a flavor I would normally get, but I'm glad I asked what's popular. Yes, this is really good. You have to try it. So we'll be having a dinner experience by Chef Paul Liu. It will be an amazing culinary menu that mixes both Asian and European cuisine. Having dinner at the OTR Stillhouse, it's located at a very historic building that's been that way since 1899. This is pad thai with shrimp and egg. So picking duck in homemade crepe.
crispy pork belly over glass noodle. Uh, and the only uh, bourbon released by a female in the state of Ohio is called Knox Joseph. Yes. Knox Joseph bourbon, Knox Joseph distillery. Salute. Thank you all for coming Thank tonight. Salute. Thank you for coming to the Knox yeah. Joseph Distillery here in Cincinnati, Ohio. We've yeah. had a fabulous time. Yeah, we had such I a great time. I appreciate you yeah. here. Thank you so much, Thank Michelle. You. Thank yeah, you. It was fun, right? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Here at Salazar Restaurant and Bar, it's owned by James Beard nominated chef Jose Salazar and they can't wait to try their brunch. So this is one of their most popular items on the label section, it's the little oyster sandwich. They fry the oysters, it has kimchi, radish, sprouts, and garlic mayo. with a surf and turf team for my brunch. Started with oysters and now I'm here with some steak and eggs. They use Sakura Wagyu sirloin steak with tempura onion, two sunny side up farm eggs, and chimichurri sauce. I got the pistachio financier cake for dessert. I had such a great time here in the Cincy region. So now I'm at the airport and if you want to continue traveling with me, check out this video and I'll see you there.